Welcome creatives. In this mini pastel lesson, I want to introduce you to the underpainting. In many of my pastel paintings, I always activate my paper with an underpainting. This takes away that blank paper anxiety and creates a bold and loose foundation for your painting. I feel beginning with an underpainting gives your work more vibrancy, movement, and interest. I will many times leave aspects of the underpainting showing in my work, giving it that wow factor, depth and strong contrasts of color. Underpaintings are a great beginning to your process and can help you loosen up and think more about color. Now let's talk about materials. Not every paper you use for pastels can accept a water media. I like using a sanded surface such as UART paper. This paper can handle any wet medium as well as a lot of layers of pastels. You will need a basic selection of pastels. I like using the softer pastels rather than the harder sticks for this underpainting lesson. In this lesson, I will be using a lot of warm tones such as oranges, reds, and yellows, as well as some purples and, and light blues as well. This will contrast the many greens in my subject, as you will see. I will also be using just regular drugstore rubbing alcohol for the underpainting, the wet media. You can also use water, mineral spirits, also watercolor, and acrylics. I use the rubbing alcohol because it dries quicker. You will also need a really inexpensive bristle brush. Do not go out and buy the most expensive brush because the sanded paper will destroy them. Now let's get started. As you can see here, here is my painting subject. It's very simple, a lot of greens going on here. So this underpainting technique is really gonna help this subject out. So I'm gonna start sketching in my subject. Now I'm looking at my photo and I'm not worried about detail at this moment. I'm just quickly sketching in the shapes that I see. I don't see trees, I don't see water, I see shapes. This will help you as you go through in your painting so that you're not too caught up in the details too soon. After I get my sketch in, I'm gonna start really quickly adding color. As you can see here, I love putting violets and blues and, and, and the pinks in my sky. I just love seeing that underneath the blue when I actually put in the actual color. I'm also kind of quickly throwing in some really bold, vibrant color contrasts of reds and oranges for my, for my background trees. I'm also going to do that in the foreground as well. I like the earth tones because really what is underneath grass? It's earth. And so I'm kind of creating that foundation right now. I use a lot of warm tones, such as yellows, oranges, and reds in my underpaintings. I also, as you can see here, I'm establishing my darks right now because darks are really, really important in a painting. I feel the dark, the contrast, really is what gives your painting the wow factor. The dark that I use is a Terry Ludwig brand. It's called Eggplant, and if you call them up, I'll provide a link in the, um, in the notes section. So I quickly filled in my subject really quickly. I didn't spend a lot of time into it. And now I'm gonna start introducing the water media part of it. I'm using regular drugstore rubbing alcohol and a cheap bristle brush. I'm really loading the brush in with the alcohol, the rubbing alcohol. And if it drips, it drips. If you don't want it to drip, you're gonna to have to control it. I do hold a paper towel in my hand so I do wipe the brush in between color. Um, and I quickly just brush in, just like I'm painting with acrylic or oil, I'm just brushing in my subject and my color, really spreading it around, getting those darks in. I'm not worried that I'm going to lose my actual subject here. It's probably gonna go away and it's gonna look like an abstract mess or chaos at the moment. 
But that's okay, because this is my underpainting. This is my base. When I'm done, I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna really kind of hone down on the details, but that's later on. I'm worried about color right now. I'm quickly brushing it in. A lot of times I will brush in the direction. So if I'm brushing in water, I'll go horizontally. If I'm brushing in grass, sometimes I'll kind of go in vertically, kind of getting those grass brush strokes in. There's not a lot of detail in this painting. It's very simple. So I'm just quickly kind of getting in that color and spreading it around. So here's my finished underpainting. As you can see, there's a lot of color going on here. No green. This is where I have a lot of fun. This is where you can loosen up, kind of do that beginning pre-workout before you really dig down deep into the painting. Have fun with it. Pick colors that look good. Pick those hot pinks, those vibrant oranges, those bright yellows. Don't hold back here. Really, really experiment and explore with what's in your pastel box. There are no mistakes because really a painting, a true masterpiece is something that's been experimented with and explored. So really don't get caught up in the anxiety. Don't get caught up in the details. Just have fun. You can always pick up another piece of paper and start over if you want. So after the underpainting, and I'll have another lesson coming up, a part two to this painting, so you can end up seeing the finished product, I will start introducing color. And I'm still not worried about detail when I do introduce that color. I'm still kind of working the paper, working it around, getting color down, creating contrast, re-establishing my lights and my darks. So that's what you'll see in the next part two of this painting. I hope you enjoyed the painting. I hope you enjoyed my process. There are so many different ways to, to go about creating a pastel painting, and this is just one of them, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you.